I'm Linda with paperboutique.blogspot.com and today we're going to be talking about Martha Stewart's satin finish craft paints. But first I'd like to thank Martha Stewart's crafts for sending me their satin paint kit, foam pouncers and stencil kit. I was so excited to receive them. I immediately thought, do these paints really work on all surfaces? Well, as you know, these paints are designed to work on wood, glass, metal, and fabric, and they're for both indoor and outdoor use. In fact, that particular information is printed on the back of each paint bottle. However, I decided to try them out on additional surfaces, surfaces that weren't recommended. Well, first I want to show you some of the amazing colors that you can get in the Martha Stewart kits. This is the kit that the, um, Martha Stewart Crafts sent to me, and it's satin, and there are 10 different colors, and I know you probably can't see all of that, but let me just show you some of the other colors. I'll just bring some in. I mean, they're absolutely beautiful, and this orange is just gorgeous, which is carrot, and the brown is a chestnut brown, and there's a, oh, a beautiful one, lavender hail storm. I have to turn, and the red is a habanero, which is gorgeous, and there's a, also a very beautiful yellow. Well, let me move all of these out of the way, but before I move them, I want to just mention one thing. If you go to michaels.com, there's what's called a color picker, and it shows all 80 satin colors, and you can kind of pick your colors. And Martha Stewart also has paint in additional finishes. You can buy chalkboard, metallic, pearl, high gloss, and glitter paint. There are so many options. Well, now I want to talk, once I get these out of the way here, I want to talk about some of the unique surfaces that work with this paint. And I used this particular brush for most of the painting, and I also, on wood, used this particular foam brush. And I did wait, as the directions say, one hour between coats. Well, I wanted to try something that wasn't recommended. And the first thing I tried was a mirror. This is just a little mirror I purchased at Joanne Fabrics, and I wish you could see how beautiful it is. It's just totally smooth. And this one, I used three coats on, but you could probably get by with two. I think it would be really fun to stencil a mirror, do some, um, some drawing or painting on this particular mirror tile, and you could use it as a decoration on a page or a card. Now, one thing I do want to mention, and it also says that on the back of the paints, is if you are painting on glass, you need to let the paint dry for 21 days. Now, who has 21 days to wait? Or one hour and then put it in a 350 degree oven for 30 minutes and be sure you let the glass cool in the oven. Well, I wanted to try something else. You, if you note on the back of the bottle, it says that you can use it on metal, but it didn't say anything about textured metal. So I purchased these cute buttons and I want to use them for a baby card. And I used, let's see, and well, I'll be demoing a couple of colors in a moment, what is called Surf. And I painted it with one coat, and I just used this brush, painted it, let it dry, and then I sanded it off with this um, distressor or file, actually. It, well, it's kind of not a file, it's, it's a sanding tool for making memories. I don't even know if they make it anymore. Sanded it down, and it's gorgeous. I mean, the paint was perfect. It worked on all of the texture. And what you could also do if you didn't want to sand it off, this is almost like a, a vintage paint look. You could just let it dry and you would have a, a solid opaque coat on, on your button. I thought that was really fun. Now, the one thing I did do that it says that you can do is wood. I used this piece of wood that I purchased at Joann's and I did do it with this particular foam brush, two coats. It covered beautifully, but I expected it would because that's what it's designed for. Now for, I think, one of my biggest surprise in using this paint, and I did not expect this to work, is foam. And let me pull in the sheet. I purchased this, it was must have been my Joanne shopping day. I purchased this foam sheet, and I cut, cut it off at Joanne's. And what I did is I used my Sizzix machine and die cut some images. Now, I did not expect, and I painted this once again with this particular brush, 
I did not expect this craft paint to adhere to foam because it's a, a porous and it's amazing. I wish you could tell you can bend it and it doesn't crack or anything. This, <laughs> this paint truly will stick to just about anything. And this is the foam that was cut using the Sizzix. And this was, let me show you the color. It was pink carnation. And let me check my notes here. Okay, this I did two coats on this, but it was a light pink to cover a gray. So pretty, pretty amazing. Now I wanted to show you, it says that it will cover metal, but I wanted to really put that to the test with a really slick kind of epoxy. And what I did here, I'm hoping you can see that. I'll use, let me use my uh, end of my paintbrush just to point. I have a lot of brads, and I'm sure you do too, that I don't like. This one I've just never really liked. So what I did is I took two coats and I let it dry an hour in between of the pink carnation and just covered my brad. And it covered this epoxy, amazing. I also painted a tack, and I think you can see that, and it was a bright yellow. I didn't get the edges, of course. I should have been better at painting that. And you could customize that for a page of brad. Oh, a while ago, I made a shadow box and I needed a little photo holder, so I looked all over town for the right color of binder clip and I discovered with Martha Stewart paint, you could just paint, and you can see the bottom, I didn't finish it so you could see. I just painted it, and that once again was the surf, and it adhered perfectly. I was, I just continue to be amazed. I mean, epoxy, plastic, metal. Well, let me go ahead and show you a couple of examples, and I'm gonna just bring the piece in so we can paint on it. What you wanna do, and I'm gonna use the surf, you, obviously you will shake it. I'm not taking too long to shake it here, but you'll wanna do it thoroughly. And then I'm just gonna put just a little, I hope you can see that in the bottom. That's way more than I need. But I wanted you to see the thickness of it. What I also did, and for those of you that have watched my other videos, you know that I like to buy rhinestones and pearls and then go ahead and color them with my alcohol markers. Well, in this case, and I'm a very messy painter, I just went ahead and painted them with the pink and then I painted them with the blue. And let me just show you, this paint has such, look at that, such a nice consistency. And um, I'm very sloppy and it would be very helpful if I had a smaller brush, but that's just one coat. And it says to let it dry an hour. Um, for the most part, I did that, some of them I cheated. And once it dries, there's the, there's the blue. Now the other thing that wasn't recommended for um, being able to use the paint is paper. And let me bring in, this is just a piece of white cardstock that I punched using a punch. And I know that you probably can't see it on the white. That was probably not the best choice, but let me go ahead and I'm just gonna put a pin in the middle and show you how I hope that this is all in camera here in frame, because look at that. It is just an incredibly, incredibly smooth paint with just such a nice, I'm gonna just show you, such a nice texture and coverage. It, it's an amazing, the satin is just an amazing paint. And then what I did, I wanted to try it with two coats because you know how some acrylic paint will warp your paper? Well, this doesn't. I let it dry and then here's another, here's the final. I let it dry, gave it another coat, and the pink, I only did one coat, and you can see I was kind of sloppy and didn't get the edges. But the coverage is amazing. It doesn't warp the paper. I've yet to find any surface that this paint will not work on. Well, one other thing I wanna mention. Now, I left my brush. Um, I left the paint on my brush overnight, and that's something you definitely do not want to do. As you can see, there's it left a little little color. I ended up soaking this brush for about two hours in mineral spirits to get it off. So what you'll do, and it worked perfect on my other brushes and the foam brush, you'll just go ahead and take this and do some soapy water and it'll come off, but you do not want to let it leave it in your brushes because it will stain it. And then of course you 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 know wipe this wash this out too and I've got so much pain here I've got a couple of other die cuts I think I'll 
all finished painting. Well, here, let me just show you really quick the foam. We've got just a couple minutes here. Look at that. Look how amazing, how amazing that is. And two coats and it's beautiful. Well, I would like to thank you for visiting. And for more projects and ideas, please visit my blog at www.paperboutique.blogspot.com. Bye-bye.